بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم إن الحمد لله نحمده ونستعينه ونستغفره ونعوذ بالله من شرور أنفسنا ومن سيئات أعمالنا من يهده الله فلا مضل له ومن يضلل فلا هادي له وأشهد أن لا إله إلا الله وأشهد أن محمدا عبده ورسوله اللهم صل على محمد وعلى آل محمد كما صليت على إبراهيم وعلى آل إبراهيم وبارك على محمد وعلى آل محمد كما باركت على إبراهيم وعلى آل إبراهيم في العالمين إنك حميد مجيد يا أيها الذين آمنوا اتقوا الله حق تقاته ولا تموتن إلا وأنتم مسلمون أما بعد فإن أصدق الحديث كتاب الله وخير الهدي هدي محمد وشر الأمور محدثاتها وكل محدثة بدعة وكل بدعة ضلالة وكل ضلالة في النار We begin by praising Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala We praise him and we ask his help and we seek his forgiveness and we seek refuge in Allah from the evil inside us and from the evil consequences of our bad actions. Whoever Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala guides, no one can misguide. And whoever Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala leaves to go astray, no one can guide. I testify that there is no God to be worshipped but Allah. And Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam is our master, our teacher, and our leader. اللهم صلي وسلم وبارك عليه وعلى آله وأصحابه أجمعين الحمد لله May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala bless you and bless your families Keep you always safe Keep your families always intact May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala protect this community And the leadership of this community اللهم آمين Brothers and sisters my topic today is on the danger of reliving the past. In the Quran, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala speaks about the battle of Uhud. A battle that took place in the third year of Hijrah. A battle that happened between the Muslims and the polytheists of Mecca. At the beginning of the battle, the Prophet وسلم, and the Muslims were actually winning the battle. But victory quickly, you know, turned into a defeat. Once the archers disobeyed the commands of Rasulullah and they left their positions on the top of the mountain. Also, a rumor started that the Prophet وسلم, was killed. Some Muslims actually dropped their equipments and left the battlefield. Anas ibn Nadr, as Imam al-Bukhari recorded, he was away. He came back on the day of the battle. He saw the Muslims sitting, crying. He said, what is the matter with you? Qalu mata Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. The Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam was killed. Faqala lahum, kumu famutu ala ma mata alayhi Rasulullah. He was so positive. And so he said to them, stand up and fight and die for the same cause that the Prophet ﷺ died for. Those who disobeyed the commands of Rasulullah ﷺ, they were extremely regretful. And they asked Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala's forgiveness. Some of them, however, did not want to let go. Blaming themselves for the defeat. Bring in what happened all the time, thinking about it day after day until Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala sent a passage in the Quran, a passage to cure the, 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 the wounds of people and treat their injuries and unite the Muslims after their defeat. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, a part of what Allah revealed in Surah Al Imran, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, Allahumma salli wa sallim wa barik ala Sayyidina Muhammad. Inna al-lazina tawallaw minkum yawma al-taqa al-jam'ani innama astazallahumu al-shaytanu bi ba'd ma kasabu. 
وَلَقَدْ عَفَ اللَّهُ عَنْهُمْ To heal the wounds of people, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala send them that passage and a part of it he says subhanahu wa ta'ala those of you who fled when the two armies met إِنَّمَا اسْتَزَلَّهُمُ الشَّيْطَانُ بِبَعْضِ مَا كَسَبُوا It was the shaytan that caused him to slip. For what? For some worldly gain. However, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has forgiven them. And in this ayah, brothers and sisters, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala set their hopes on the future. Diverted them from standing by the ruins of the past, wailing and blaming themselves for what happened. Brothers and sisters, we all have a past. Everyone has a past. We have been hurt. We've been offended, disappointed, disrespected. We've made poor decisions. However, bringing the, those events back Bringing those events back, wallahi, will weigh you down like a, a load of heavy baggage. So the best thing to do is just drop it. Let it go. Whether it happened 20 years ago or 20 minutes ago. Do not bring the disappointments of yesterday into today. Do not dwell on what happened in the past. Nothing of what has happened to you was a surprise to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Everything, your past, your present, and your future is in the hands of Allah. And it's a part of the plan of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. You will not be able to live successful, happy life if you repeatedly relive in what didn't work out, who hurt you, the mistakes that she made. Thinking constantly about the problem of the past, wallahi, will weigh you down, will put you down, will discourage you, will defeat you, will make you depressed, will cause you to have no passion whatsoever. And if you keep doing that, wallahi, you will lose your present and your future. You've made a mistake. Ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala's forgiveness. Don't beat yourself up. Sincerely turn to Allah. Genuinely show the remorse. But you've got to move on. Disappointments and calamities. People slandered you. People did this to you. Opportunities that, or uh, jobs that you missed. Opportunities that you missed. It's all a part of the plan of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. You've made a mistake in the past, learn from it and move on. But do not dwell in your failures of the past. Do not dwell in the regrets, the losses, the calamities of the past. Ammar ibn Yasir was one of the great companions of the Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa Him and his parents, Sumayya, and Yasir, all three converted to Islam at the same time. And subhanAllah, they were from the early Muslims, the early people who embraced this religion. But they were poor, they were weak. They didn't have any support from anybody. They did not belong to a big, strong tribe to support them. And so they were subject to, to torture to punishment. Can you imagine a man sees his parents being tortured right before his own eyes? A man sees his mother actually getting killed right before his own eyes. And his enemies, the enemies of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala wanted to break him. And, they, and by, by taking the most precious thing that he had, which is his belief in Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, they said, Ya Ammar, say something good about our gods and we will let you go. And to protect himself, Ammar ibn Yasir praised their idols and he was released. 
He felt sad. He felt extremely disappointed, miserable, disappointed at himself. And so he went to Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam and he said, Halaktu ya Rasulullah, Halaktu ya Rasulullah, I'm ruined, O Prophet of Allah. So the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam asked about the matter and he told him what happened. The Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam remained silent until Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala sent, Illa man ukriha wa qalbuhu mutma'innun bil iman. Except for those who are forced. They are forced against their own will. However, their hearts are still firm in faith. Ammar, upon hearing this ayah, they said Ammar was so elated, he was so happy. And to show everybody that he's not dwelling in the past, that he's not reliving the past, that he's not thinking too much about what he did. He put double the effort in worshiping Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to prove to everybody and to himself, no, you did not break me down. And Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam said about him, Inna Ammar, Inna Ammar mulia iman min ila, ila mishashi, laqad mulia Ammar imanan ila mishashi. That Ammar is full of faith from head to toe. And he said, Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, In al Jannah Latashtahi li thalath. Allahu Akbar. Jannah is yearning for three people. How many of us yearn to Jannah? How many millions, probably billions of people, Muslims and non Muslims alike, yearning for Jannah? But Jannah is yearning for three. In al Jannah Latashtaku ila Ali. إن الجنة لتشتاق إلى عمار إن الجنة لتشتاق إلى سلمان. He said صلى الله عليه وسلم in a hadith located in Sunan al-Tirmidhi, Jannah is yearning for three, it's yearning for عمار, for سلمان, and for علي بن أبي طالب. So brothers and sisters, really, what is the benefit of pulling your hair out? over a missed opportunity or a calamity that happened in the past? What is the value of keep bringing something that has already been forgotten? Wallahi, it will not benefit you in any way. The only thing that will do, that will add pain and suffering. Listen to Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. He said, Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, Wahris ala ma yanfa'ak. And it cherish that which benefits you. Wasta'in billahi wa la ta'jaz. And put your trust in Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and never, ever lose motivation. Because reliving the past will cause you to lose motivation. So he said, Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, Wasta'in Billahi wa la ta'jaz. Put your trust in Allah Subhanahu wa Ta'ala and do not lose motivation. Wa in asabaka shay. But if something bad happened, La taqul law anni fa'altu kaza wa kaza la kana kaza wa kaza. If something bad happened, don't say, Oh, I, if only, or had I done this or that. And then he said, Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, why you shouldn't be doing this? Why you shouldn't be thinking about what happened in the past? Why you should just move on? He said, فَإِنَّ لَوْ تَفْتَحُ عَمَلَ الشَّيْطَانِ Because لَوْ if will open the work of the shaytan. What is the work of the shaytan here? Doubts, discourage, despair. That is the work of the shaytan. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala keep you all safe and healthy. Allahumma ameen. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala keep your families all healthy. Allahumma ameen. Carry on with your life. Think about your present and your future. Learn from the past, but do not dwell on it. Carry on with motivation and hope. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is so hopeful. Aqulu qawli hadha wa astaghfirullah alayhi wa
Elhamdülillah. Salatu vesselamu ala Resulillah. Ve ala alihi ve ashabihi ve men vela. Allahümme la ilme lana illa ma allemtena inneke entel alimul hakim. Allahümme enfe'na bima allemtena ve allimna ma enfe'na. Allahümme zilna ilma. Allahümme salli ve sellim ve barik ala seyyidina Muhammed ve ala alihi ve ashabihi ecma'in. Elhamdülillah. Um, before we finish, I just got a message from somebody in my community um, about a child uh, who's only two year old. Um, I don't know the family, but uh, just the mother left me a message that I, I just listened to it right before I came here on my way. And Miskina, yani, she broke down. Her two-year-old child was uh, was diagnosed with a brain tumor. So remember her in your dua, inshallah. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala remove her illness. Allahumma ameen. Allahumma anta shafi la shifa'a illa shifa'uk. Allahumma anta shafi la shifa'a illa shifa'uk. Allahumma shfiha shifa'a la yugadir saqama. Allahumma ameen. Ya Allah, we ask you to cure this little girl. Allahumma ameen. And send her home, inshallah, safe and healthy to her family. And be with her family. And protect our kids. Protect our kids from any harm. Ya Allah. Allahumma amin. I apologize for that. I quote the word of this and I pray for Allah to you. Allahumma ja'al hadha al-jam'i jam'an marhuma. Allahumma ja'al hadha al-jam'i jam'an marhuma. Wa tafarruqana min ba'dihi tafarruqan ma'asuma. Wa la taj'al fina wa la baynana shaqiyan wa la mahruma. اللهم اغفر لنا ذنوبنا وإسرافنا في أمرنا وثبت أقدامنا منصرنا على القوم الكافرين اللهم من ولي من أمر المسلمين أمرا فرفق بهم فرفق به اللهم من ولي من أمر المسلمين أمرا فرفق بهم فرفق به ومن اشتد عليهم فاشدد عليه ومن اشتد عليهم فاشدد عليه Yes, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to ease the pain and the suffering of all people who are going through any type of pain اللهم آمين Yes, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to remove the pain and the suffering of anybody who's gone through any pain. We ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to bless us. To bless us and show us the way to win his pleasure. Allahumma ameen. We ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to beautify us inwardly and outwardly. Allahumma ameen. We ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to protect our tongues from backbiting, from slandering. We ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to protect our eyes from cheating. We ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to cleanse our hearts from all the ills. Allahumma ameen. Allahumma ameen. Allahumma ameen. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala bless you and bless this community. Aqulu qawli hadha wa astaghfirullah li wa lakum. Inna Allah ya'mur bi'adli wa al-ihsani wa isa'i dhul qurba. Wa anha anil fahshai wa al-munkari wa al-baghi ya'idhukum na'alakum tadhakkaroon. Ithkuru Allah ya'adhkurukum as'aluhu ya'atakum. Wa astaghfiruhu ya'gfir lakum. Wa aqim as-salah. الله أكبر الله أكبر أشهد أن لا إله إلا الله أشهد أن محمد رسول الله حي على الصلاة حي على الفلاح قد قامت الصلاة قد قامت الصلاة الله أكبر الله أكبر لا إله إلا الله Still with heaven, you have heaven from Allah, stir in your minds, fill in the gaps, what do you do, who will Allah? Yeah, I can't 
نعبد وإياك نستعين اهدنا الصراط المستقيم صراط الذين أنعمت عليهم صراط الذين أنعمت عليهم غير المغضوب عليهم ولا الضالين آمين يا الذي خلقك فسواك فعدلك في أي صورة ما شاء ركبك كلا بل تكذبون بالدين وإن عليكم لحافظين وإن يصلونها يوم الدين وما هم عنها بغائبين وما أدراك ما يوم الدين ثم ما أدراك ما يوم الدين يوم لا تملك نفس لنفس شيئا والأمر يومئذ لله الله أكبر سمع الله لمن حمده الله أكبر الله أكبر الله أكبر الله أكبر الحمد لله رب العالمين الرحمن الرحيم مالك يوم الدين إياك نعبد وإياك نستعين اهدنا الصراط المستقيم صراط الذين أنعمت عليهم غير المغضوب عليهم والضالين آمين بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم والعصر إن الإنسان لفي خسر إلا الذين آمنوا إلا الذين آمنوا الله أكبر سمع الله لمن حمده الله أكبر الله أكبر الله 
الله أكبر الله أكبر السلام عليكم ورحمة الله السلام عليكم ورحمة الله السلام السلام عليكم everyone please wait for a very exciting moment right now we have a brother that will be taking the shahada so I'm going to ask Sheikh Atif Mahboub to please ask him to come to the front. Alhamdulillah, after that, I have a couple of announcements, very important announcements about the programs that will be taking place this weekend. Brother Samuel, is, is he here? Here's another one. Alhamdulillah, salatu wassalamu ala rasulullah. This is great news. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala bless him and make his journey to Islam easy. Allahumma ameen. So, would you like to tell us how did you, how did you convert? Yeah, of how course. How did you get interested about Islam? Who led you to, to that as well? Um, so yeah, hi everyone. Um, I'm Sam. Uh, two years ago, um, I was lost. I was, uh, I was angry with myself. I was, I was afraid. Didn't know what, didn't know what to do with my life. Um, so many times I couldn't even go to sleep at bed. And uh, you know, one time uh, I remember I just, I I listened to the call of prayer one time I was driving up to work, and from that moment it just, just kind of stuck with me, and I began to, you know really figure out like more about Islam from there just from that one call of prayer and you know I, I felt like it was a calling uh, you know more, much more deeper than anything you know I, I spent 27 years just um, just trying to find out who I, who I am and uh, it's been rough um, these last couple of months has been part of the, the darkest months of my life and I'm just, you know, I feel like I've, I found my home. I feel like I found my calling. And, you know, I'm, I'm very thankful for, for Zoo, who's the one that I reached out, the first person I reached out to. Because of him, I am here right today. What's your name? Asalaamu As Alaikum. Tell them how did you get his meeting. It's a, it's a quick story. So both of us used to do research together. Uh, we both used to do research regarding Alzheimer's disease. Mm. Uh, and that's how we first met. After we both graduated, right, we both stayed within the realm of science. Uh, and then we stayed in contact this way. And then he always knew I was a Muslim. So and then Samuel reached out to me. Uh, and then we made it happen. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala made it happen. Allah bless you. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala bless the two of you. Allahumma ameen. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala make things easy for Sam, insha'Allah. So, it, to become a Muslim is so simple. You have to declare the shahada. And I'm sure that you guys have been practicing, right? <laughs> so, if you would like to repeat after me, say, Ashadu. Ashadu. Allah. 
Allah ilaha ilaha illa ilah Allah Allah wa ashhadu wa ashhadu anna anna Muhammad Muhammad Rasul uh, Rasul Rasul Allah Allah I bear witness I bear witness that there is no god to be worshiped but Allah that there is no god to be worshiped but Allah and Muhammad and Muhammad is his slave and messenger is a slave and messenger takbir Allah what can we word you know, um, there is a report, there is a story in our, in our tradition where a man who fought the Prophet ﷺ, he was a source of trouble. He fought him for 23 years. But then Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala opened up his heart to Islam. His name is Amr ibn al-As. And so he went to Medina to meet with the Prophet. And so he wanted to give pledge to the Prophet. And so he extended his, the Prophet extended his hand to him to give him the bay'ah, to give him the pledge. And he took his hand back. And the Prophet Muhammad said, what is the matter? He said, in one condition. He said, what is the condition? He said, I want all my sins of the past to be forgiven. Then the Prophet ﷺ said, don't she know? And the Islam ma qabla. Haven't you heard that becoming a Muslim we remove all the troubles, all the sins, all the mistakes, all the shortcomings of the past. And so he gave bay'ah and he became Muslim. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala make it easy on you, inshaAllah, and for you. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, inshaAllah, make your journey easy to get to know him, inshaAllah, and worship him. And to make him a part of your life. And the list, on the list, on the top, actually, of the list of your priorities. Allahumma ameen. Zakumullah khair. Takveer. Welcome aboard, Sam. Zakumullah khair. Say, may Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala bless you. Allahumma ameen. Her name is um, Badia Kazel, and she'll be introducing her section classes tonight at 7 o'clock about Maqarib and Sifat. So please come here. This is Sisters Only program. This is Sisters Only program. That's tonight. That's an introduction. So you can come here, and then she, you can register with her. Inshallah ta'ala. She has been doing this for over 20 years. She's quite, quite qualified. She has had her stada. She has had her um, in many areas. So come and join us tonight at 7 o'clock. 7 to 8.30. Sister Sadia Ustada Sadia. No, excuse me. Ustada Badia Khazal. Also, don't forget tomorrow. Tomorrow we have our um, Taekwondo class. That starts at 10.50 in our sports floor area. Alhamdulillah. With Muslim sister and Muslim brother teaching you the self-defense. Inshallah ta'ala. And also family night. Special family night on Monday. Special family night this coming Monday. Right here there will be a movie called Bilal. This is a film. The new... New... Creed of Hero, inshallah ta'ala, Brother Bilal. So come on and join us on Monday. There will be pizza served, and also we will have uh, popcorn and as well as um, uh, some uh, candy. So we'll see you here, inshallah ta'ala, tonight for the class and also Monday. Jazakumullah khairan on the way back. Don't forget to donate generously, and please see Brother Abdul Qadir. Thank you.